Ever wondered what would happen if you jumped from space without a parachute? Now, let's be clear this isn't your average cliff dive or bungee jump we're talking about. This is space, the final frontier. And you are about to take a leap of faith from the edge of our atmosphere with nothing but the Earth's gravitational pull to guide you home. So, what are the factors that would influence this epic fall? Well, first off, there's gravity. That unseen force that keeps us grounded, literally. In space, gravity is much weaker than on Earth, but as you get closer to our planet, it increases. This means you start off slow, then pick up speed, a lot of speed. Then there's air resistance. You know that feeling when you stick your hand out of a moving car's window? That's air resistance. In space, there's no air, hence no resistance. However, as you descend and enter the Earth's atmosphere, you'll start to feel the pushback. This air resistance will slow you down but not by much. And, what about the speed of descent? The speed at which you fall is influenced by both gravity and air resistance. In theory, you could reach speeds of up to 1000 kilometers per hour. To put that into perspective, that's faster than the speed of sound. Now, if this all sounds a bit daunting, let's not forget about the daredevils who've done something similar. Take Felix Baumgartner, for instance. In 2012, he jumped from a helium balloon at an altitude of 39 kilometers, not quite space, but close enough. He reached a maximum speed of 1,352 kilometers per hour, breaking the sound barrier in the process, so there you have it. The factors that would play a role in your hypothetical space jump, gravity, air resistance, and the speed of descent. Now that we've set the stage, imagine yourself at the edge of space, ready to make the leap. What do you think will happen next? So, you've jumped, what's next? It's a question that sends chills down your spine, isn't it? But let's face it, we're in the middle of an uncontrolled fall from space, and there's no turning back now. The first thing you'll notice is the accelerating sensation. Your body will start to feel heavier, and that's because of gravity. You see, gravity is the force that pulls two bodies toward each other. The closer you are to an object, the stronger the gravitational pull. In this case, you and Earth are the two bodies and you're getting closer to each other by the second. In the upper atmosphere, where you're currently plummeting, there's little to no air resistance. This means you're speeding up and fast. Imagine driving a car with no brakes on a steep downhill road and you'll get a pretty good idea of what's happening. But it's not just the speed. The lack of air resistance also means there's nothing to stabilize your fall. You could start to spin and if that happens, you're in for a wild ride. Spinning out of control at such high speeds can be dangerous. It's like being on a roller coaster that's gone off the rails. The rapid spinning could cause blood to pool in your extremities leading to blackouts or even more severe health risks. As you fall, the atmosphere gradually thickens. The air resistance increases, slowing your fall somewhat and helping to stabilize your descent. But don't let that fool you. Even with the increased air resistance you're still hurtling towards Earth at breakneck speeds. So, as you fall through the Earth's atmosphere, there's a lot to consider. Gravity is pulling you down, air resistance is trying to slow you down, and the potential for spinning out of control is ever-present. But remember, this is just the first stage of your daring leap from space. You are hurtling towards Earth at breakneck speeds, but what awaits as you get closer to the ground? You're nearing Earth now. Can you feel the heat? As you plummet towards Earth, the intensity of the journey increases. You are now entering the phase of atmospheric re-entry. Now you might be wondering, what's the big deal about re-entry? Well let me paint a picture for you. Imagine a meteor hurtling through space. As it approaches our planet, it starts to interact with the Earth's atmosphere. This interaction causes friction, leading to a buildup of heat. The same principle applies to you, a human meteor, as you re-enter Earth's atmosphere. The heat generated can be incredibly intense, with temperatures potentially reaching thousands of degrees. But don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. The human body is not as dense as a meteor so the heat generated would be less severe, though still quite formidable. At this stage the air around you would be superheated, creating a glowing layer of plasma. Pretty wild, right? Now onto the crux of the matter. Survival. The heat is one thing but the speed at which you're traveling is another. You'd be moving at such high speeds that the sudden deceleration upon hitting the thicker layers of the atmosphere would be akin to hitting a brick wall. The force of this impact could easily cause internal injuries, even if you manage to avoid burning up during re-entry. And let's not forget the final hurdle, the ground. Without a parachute to slow your descent, the Earth's surface might as well be a concrete wall. The impact would be, in no uncertain terms, bone crushing. The force would be equivalent to a high-speed car crash, 
but without the safety features of a vehicle to protect you. So to sum it all up, re-entry and landing without a parachute is a risky endeavor, to say the least. It involves a fiery re-entry, a high-speed encounter with the atmosphere, and a potentially lethal meeting with the Earth's surface. A fiery re-entry and a bone-crushing impact. That's quite an adventure, isn't it? But is there any way to survive? Could anyone make it through such a fall alive? You might be wondering. Well, survival isn't entirely out of the question. Let's explore some possibilities. Firstly, a wingsuit could help to slow the descent and provide limited steering ability. This might just steer you away from a fatal crash landing. However, even with a wingsuit, the speed of the fall would still be dangerously high. Alternatively, finding water to land in could be a slightly better option. Water, due to its fluid nature, could cushion the impact to a certain extent. But remember, hitting water at high speed can be just as deadly as hitting concrete. In summary, surviving a jump from space without a parachute is theoretically possible but extremely unlikely. It's a thrilling concept, a daredevil's dream but fraught with peril at every turn. So, jumping from space without a parachute? An exhilarating thought but perhaps not the best idea. Stay safe out there, adventure seekers. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. That's all for Nifty Narrations.